He daydreamed. All the time. <laughs> yes. Yes. I think that's what I do in place of thinking, usually. And so people say, what are you thinking about? Remembering things of my childhood. How come you ain't never liked me? Liked you? Who in the hell ever said, I got to like you? I was an adopted child of my grandparents. And I don't know how I can ever express my gratitude for that because my parents would have been a mess, you know. And there were considerations about that. Where should I go? And that began to bother me when I hear those discussions at night. Where should James Earl go? Let's get this straight right now. We'll go along any further. I ain't got to like you. Mr. Rand, don't give me my money come payday because he liked me. He give me because he owe me. Now, I didn't give you everything I had to give you. I gave you your life. Your mama and me worked it out between us. And lacking your black ass was not a part of the bargain. And don't you try and go through life worried if somebody like you or not. You best make sure that they are doing right by you. You understand what I'm saying, boy? Yes, sir. Then you get the hell out of my face and go on down under A&P. And the winner is James Earl Jones. How you been? <laughs> Quiet. Yeah. You had a stammer one time. Yeah. Yeah. I was very quiet then. James Earl Jones remained virtually mute for eight years of his early life because of a stammer. Today, his regal bass has become one of the most recognizable voices in America. I was a stutterer. I couldn't talk. And I became a, a, just a nonverbal person. I became a, a, a writer. You know. Donald Crouch in high school said, uh, do you like these words? And I was then writing words of my own. He said, do you, like, do you like these words? Do you like the way they sound in your head? He says, well, they sound 10 times better when you give them out in the air. It's too bad you can't say these words. He began to challenge me to nudge me toward speaking again. And by using my own poetry and then other poets, he himself said he, he learned a poem a day in case he w went blind. <laughs> you know, he'd have a whole book of poems in his head. And he, he, he nudged me toward that, toward the, the, the you know, Acknowledging and appreciating the beauty of words. That's the category tonight. Words, uh, words that sound great when spoken by James Earl Jones. And here to assist in the presentation of tonight's top ten list is James Earl Jones. James? <laughs> here we go. Number ten. Mellifluous. I've been trained for stage, and I, I feel I know what I'm doing. I have a, a better sense of my responsibility, but I love doing films. I love doing television. I think television is very, very important for the whole world. Uh, so I would not say I prefer one over the other. I feel perhaps more comfortable on stage, though. I am a man for sin again and sinning. I lived in an apartment in New York City I paid $13 a month for it, and that was okay. You know, it was a, we, we had no standards uh, to live up to, uh, except to just keep working. You're the only person who can tell what, whether you have talent or not. And there's a, a certain point where you've got to be really honest with yourself and say, yeah, I do, and I'm going on, or no, I don't. And uh, your parents can't do it for you, critics can't do it for you. Once you determine that, then there should be no room for doubt. And you look out too busy to find you, girl. You're selling my clothes, my ring, my silver brushes. Give me another chance, baby. I miss you awful. Just don't come home with me, girl. Your will is in jail. You're just smelling gravy here. Yeah? If you want to deal with pain, unemployment pain, look at the Asian community in terms of uh, jobs on Broadway, off-Broadway, movies, TV. You keep on depending on the goodness of the man's heart. Second base from the Dodgers as far as we'll ever get because no majority ever gave a minority a fair share of the loot without force. Number nine. There is similitude. Still negative function. The Teleflex drive cable must be sheared away. Fire the explosive bolt. Roger. Guppy.
You said guppy! What responsibility do you feel with a, a good brain and a powerful voice and a strong presence to somehow reach out to those young? No, I have to do it in my work. I can't do it as a politician or, or an activist. I don't do that well. Probably because I, I don't, I don't, uh, I can have a conversation with you that might be meaningful, might be, you know, hot air, I don't know, but, but I, I can't do that in public. Uh, I, I can't hold forth, I cannot, I'm not facile with words. They told me that they was jobs, you know. Go home, nigger. Goddamn scab. You watch your mouth, Pecklewood. I've been called nigger, and I can't help that the way white folks is, but I ain't never been called no scab. And I ain't fixing the start up now. I go ton for ton loading coal with any man here. And when I do, I expect the same dollar for the same work. Sulish Naya. I find your lack of faith disturbing. George thought he wanted a, pardon the expression, darker voice. So he hires a guy born in Mississippi, uh, raised in Michigan, who stutters. And that's the voice, and that's me. I, I got, I lucked out, you know, from all these so-called handicaps. He first started using Orson Welles and thought Orson mm -hmm. might be doing wow. too recognizable. Ah, right. And he called my agent and said, does Jimmy want a day's work? They paid me $7,000, and I, and I thought that was good money. And I got to be um, a voice on, on, on a movie. It was great fun to be a part of that. But your name was not listed in the credits, as I recall. I didn't want uh, no that. One no one Whose house is this? Carrie Fisher. And she's a little crazy, so get ready to run. <laughs> and she showed up, and we learned that Carrie and James Earl Jones have never met in real life. Because in Star Wars, James was in a sound booth doing Darth Vader and had never been to the set. <laughs> and we had a very, you know, little scene that was... Uh... Let it bounce off each other. It's not funny anymore, James! <laughs> then why am I laughing? <laughs> As they were approaching each other, Carrie said, Dad! Will you tell Regis that you are his father? <laughs> please, please, I'm begging you. I've been waiting. <laughs> Oh, I am too, you, Regis, I am your father. <laughs> Butros, Butros, Gali. Torpedoes did not self-destruct. You heard it hit the hull, and I was never here. Contact Dallas, give him the go. I'm afraid if I dig any deeper, no one's gonna like what I find. You took an oath. If you recall, When you first came to work for me, and I don't mean to the National Security Advisor of the United States, I mean to his boss, and I don't mean the president, he gave you word to his boss, he gave you word to the people the United States. Your word is who you are. Look inside yourself, Simba. You are more than what you have become. You must take your place in the circle of life. How can I go back? I'm not who I used to be. Remember who you are. You are my son and the one true king. Remember who you are. 
My son works. What is it now? Neil Sinephrin. Mm -hmm. I have no presumptions or no arrogance about my voice, you know. You want to think that I might even be in love with my voice. I'm not, because it, it, it would be the most unfaithful uh, lover I, I ever had, because it fails me often. Fujitsu mm -hmm. or the... Fuji. She loved me for the dangers I have passed. And I loved her, that she did pity them. This only is the witchcraft I have used. Mujibur and Sarajou. I'll trade you. That's really nice of you, but that ball really is signed by Babe Ruth. So is this one, with the rest of the 1927 Yankees. Reverse Row, Lou Gehrig, Babe Ruth. Heebie Jeebies. <laughs> Just give the audience the experience. It's the best way to convey an, an idea is through, through the feelings, through the, the, the experience of the characters. Now, you really pissed me off. Okay, just hold it right there. I was hoping I wasn't going to have to do it this way. What the hell is that? It's a gun. What do you think it is? It's your finger. No, it's not. It's a gun. Yeah, let me see it. Get out of here, I'm not gonna show you my gun. One of the things Fields of, Field of Dreams does to people, the father, the son relationship, the importance of it, and the dream deferred, yeah. and the sense of, of a man letting his dreams become reality is so moving that the audience I saw it with in a crowded theater in Toronto, you could hear the sobbing. Really? So I understand you saying you picked huh. up the screenplay, read it, and began to cry. Realized that uh, I was being taken on a, on a ride, you know, and a very subjective one. I'm glad that affects other people the same way. People will come, Ray. They'll come to Iowa for reasons they can't even fathom. They'll turn up your driveway, not knowing for sure why they're doing it. They'll arrive at your door as innocent as children, longing for the past. The speech that James Earl Jones does always struck me in the sense that, not to say that James Earl Jones isn't an athlete, but it's, it's, it's hard to imagine Mantle or Mays or Williams ever articulating the sport the way he was able to. So you have a non-athlete articulate the sport that we all love and play till the streetlights come on, season to season. That's, that's what's so remarkable about that movie, that like a chalkboard it erases and everything that was good could still be again. America has rolled by like an army of steamrollers. It's been erased like a blackboard, rebuilt and erased again. But baseball has marked the time. This field, this game, is a part of our past, Ray. It reminds us of all that once was good, and it could be again. Oh, people will come, Ray. People will most definitely come. Nobody can say what you are, what you should be. But you, and uh, the freer you are from the influences of uh, peers and society, uh, the better you'll find yourself. Jimmy, good friend and icon of the American theater, Rest assured that our debt to you will always be borne with appreciation and grace. Go well, good sir, with the memories of this evening to warm your heart and light your way. Ladies and gentlemen, I stand before you deeply honored, uh, mighty grateful, and just plain gobsmacked.
<laughs> and the number one word that sounds great when spoken by James Earl Jones. Oprah. Yeah!